Alright you guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're just going to crack straight into it guys. This thumbnail, okay, this one right here, this one, from KTO. Meet the ugliest player in NFL history. I've seen this thumbnail so many times, I've been recommended Jack Lambert so many fucking times, we're finally going to watch it, okay? Let's get straight into it. Jack Lambert, I'm not going to do any research. All I know is he's one ugly motherfucker, and uh, he was pretty ruthless. So let's get into it, man. Jack Lambert, finally. If you have seen my previous videos, I have shown you what toughness, scary, and pure intimidation look like. If you combine all those things into a man's face, it would look like this. <laughs> this man is Jack Lambert, the centerpiece Where's his of the through the 70s and early 80s. What the fuck? He's got no teeth! <laughs> I thought that was just his mouth guard, like, blacked out, but he's actually got no teeth. Okay. The fuck? Come on, mate. First of all, I just love the old NFL Films presentation of Jack Lambert. Legend has it, he ate glass and pounded his head against lockers before waging war. He announced on a Monday night game that he hailed from Buzzard's Breath, Wyoming. He decreed that all quarterbacks should wear dresses. At first, I thought they were making this stuff up. Do you think there should be any rules changes for the safety Here he is. of the quarterback? Well, uh, it might be a good idea to put dresses on all of them. Uh, that might help a little bit. He, he wasn't, he wasn't that the... scary. He actually looks like, like a half, you know, normal human there. <laughs> Week before, he was ejected for a late down quarterback. Anyways, Jack Lambert would go on to revolutionize the middle linebacker position. Which is odd, considering he was a quarterback in high school, who mostly focused on basketball. After being recruited to Kent State to play quarterback, because of his size and quickness, his sophomore year, he moved to the other side of the ball to play defensive end, and then eventually to middle linebacker. Here's an interesting fact. Middle linebacker. Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Saban was a defensive back, while Lambert played middle linebacker. Lambert had also gone to school to become a veterinarian. Yeah, imagine this is <coughs> taking care of your pet. To be fair, the dude was a nice guy off the field. As this article puts it, he's a quiet, extremely private man, a bird watcher and avid fisherman. He spent much of his off-seasons ensuring greater privacy by building himself a country retreat about 40 miles northeast of the city. So a nice, quiet guy off the field, but on the field, that's a whole different story. That's what you'll find, usually. <laughs> his career at Kent State was successful enough to be drafted by the Steelers in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> he just kicked him, what the fuck? He had concerns about his size and didn't believe his skill set would translate to the next level. But the Steelers saw potential in him. They had plans to play him an outside linebacker. Entering training camp, Jack Lambert was 6 foot 4 and only weighed 205 pounds. He was so slender, when one of the Steelers administrators saw him for the first time, he told the coaches, oh, there's another wasted pick. Another thing about Jack, he didn't look crazy when he first got to Pittsburgh. He was actually a decent looking guy. The iconic, toothless image of Jack Lambert started in his childhood. He had four teeth and knocked out while playing basketball. The dentist would give him removable dentures. His mom says when he lost his dentures while swimming, he stayed out of school until the dentist made him a replacement. He hated the look that much. He wears his dentures at all times, except when he was on the field. Except when he's on the field. Hmm. Interesting. That's a key factor to the fact that this guy is the ugliest player in NFL history. That, that, that's why. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad thing to get your teeth knocked out. During his rookie year, he was a backup outside linebacker. But fate would have it that the starting middle linebacker, Henry Davis, would suffer an injury. The Steelers decided to try something out and put Jack a middle linebacker. This would end up being one of the greatest moves in NFL history. He would go on to win Defensive Rookie of the Year and help lead the Steelers to their first Super Bowl victory. Here's how Jack Lambert revolutionized the position. 
Before this, the prototypical middle linebacker was the mold of a big Butkus or Ray Nitschke. A big, mean. <laughs> I've looked at both player. these guys. Jack Lambert was smaller, faster, quicker, and his versatility would allow him to drop back in coverage, cover sideline to sideline, and make any tackle. Having a defense focus on the middle linebacker being this versatile in the pass and run game Fuck came in as the Tampa 2. And Lambert was perfect for it. And even though he was a smaller linebacker, I wonder what his weight he got to. White people up, and he prided himself on it. He was out there for blood and demanded the Bang! Of Suplex! I don't care that, that my opponents like me. I care that they respect me, though. His famous. That's the same as Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis said, You don't want to be liked out here, you want to be respected. It's better to be respected than to be liked. That's what he said. Look, wasn't the reason he was a great linebacker, but it sure adds to the intimidation factor. When he wasn't in the game, he would sit alone on the end of the bench, his breath steaming out from underneath the towel that was draped over his head. Plus, if you played against him, he hated you, and he would let it be known. During the 76 Super Bowl, the Steelers kicker missed a crucial field goal, and one of the Cowboys players, Cliff Harris, thanked him for missing the field goal, and Jack Lambert did not like that. Oh shit! Another time, Bengals running back Archie Griffin <laughs> has an interesting story about when he was blocking Jack Lambert. And I went at Jack with a great deal of intensity, and I caught him with a great block. Hit him with the best block of my entire professional career. He Got did. back to the huddle. Uh, to my surprise, the next play called was an 18. was a, 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 the same play. Tossed me to the fullback. When I got out there, wide right, I looked down inside to see where Jack was lined up. And I wanted to make sure that I would take the same approach to him that I had taken the play before. When I looked down the side, I, I noticed that Jack was staring right back at me. That was the ball snap. I went after Jack with the same intensity that I've gone after him to play before. This time I got right into his face, ready to explode into another great block. But wham! He hit me with a forearm that you cannot believe. Lifted me up, put me flat on my back, went across the line of scrimmage, and tackled Pete Johnson for a three-yard loss. Well, after the play was over, I was still lying on the ground because Jack had hit me so hard, he had put me in a daze. And Jack saw me lying there, and he walked over to him, stood over the top of me, looked down at me, and he said, Griffin, if you ever, if you ever try to block me again, I'll bite your head. Unfortunately for Jack, <laughs> what he was great at was overshadowed by his image. According to fellow teammates and former coaches, everyone raved about how perfect the dude's technique was. His football IQ Slam! was the charts, and being that great, along with a multitude of other great players, is why they won four Super Bowls. He led the team in tackles year in and year out. He averaged 146 per season through his 10th year. In the real Fuck. world, he's a nice dude a deputy wildlife officer who coaches a bit of youth sports. A lot of people talk about how nice of a guy he is, but don't get me wrong, you don't want to piss the guy off. So the number Jack War, number 58, is unofficially retired by the team. This means technically a player can choose number 58, but just some advice, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> don't do he it. Retired, he reportedly told the equipment manager he was not to issue out his number. And apparently, the equipment manager just ignored Lambert and tried to issue out the number anyway. And when Lambert found this out, he later fought the equipment manager outside of the facility because he tried to give out his number. Love it. Love it, man. Love it. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to subscribe to this guy, KTO. Let's see what else he's got. I reckon there's fuck, there's gonna be so, so many good videos for me to watch. Share she, share she. There's gotta be the most polarizing ever, dirtiest player in NFL history. Seahawks ran the most dirtiest player in NFL history. Oh, we gotta watch that. That's the next reaction, guys. If you've enjoyed this one, or if you want to support me or the channel, please press like. If you want to subscribe, please do, and I'll see you guys back here to watch. The dirtiest player in NFL history with 2.1 million views in only two months. That's gone viral. So I'll see you for that one. Peace, everybody.